You know that one song you can't get enough of? Chances are it was made with a sample from Splice. Explore top packs made by your favorite producers, sketch out song ideas in seconds with Create Mode, and dive into a sample catalog that's so deep, it's dangerous. Find out why Splice is the industry's not-so-secret secret. Visit splice.com and try for free today. Welcome to The Fader Interview. I'm Alex Robert Ross, Editorial Director of The Fader. In 2016, Kameya Yewa released Fetish Bones, her debut album as More Mother. A shockwave of noise, rap, jazz, and thunderous spoken word, the project introduced More Mother as an experimental musician who was perpetually tapped into some dark and essential history with ramifications beyond the borders of the United States. Since then, she's become an underground ambassador for a righteous rage that flattens spacetime. This week, More Mother will release her new album, Black Encyclopedia of the Air. In the music, More Mother takes the listener into the eye of the storm, a relatively calm location in her catalogue, where smooth, lounge-ready loops lay underneath her stark poetry. It's full of features from artists like Pink Sifu, Brother May, and Black Quantum Futurism, More Mother's multidisciplinary collective with Rashida Phillips. But as is always the case with More Mother's collaborations, she's the undisputed guiding force, a mystic and a student with centuries of wisdom both hard-won and brutally lost to guide her. Earlier this week, The Fader's Jordan Darville spoke with More Mother about paying tribute to people's stories through music, a new album that she promises will be even more accessible, and her favourite song on Kanye West's Donda. Are you still living in northern Philadelphia? No, I live in, um, I'm bi-coastal, but I'm in California now. I asked because I was wondering if living there inspired your music. I I know it's got a significant jazz history with uh, John Coltrane and Sun Ra. So I was wondering if you had any memories of that musical history and playing singer work. Helped me practice my craft. You know, I had an event called Rockers that was on for over a decade. That was a festival and a um, monthly event. So that's my family right there, all the Rockers crew. Are there any specific events that you hosted that really stand out in your mind? Yeah, I mean, just being able to throw your own event and festival outside of industry. I don't even think that's even heard of, you know, to be longer than a decade. There was the event called Afropunk. It was like a picnic and stuff. And that's the only thing that I can think of. But that went corporate really fast. It's the only thing I can think of that it went on as long as the event I did, you know. So it's a pretty historical outside of industry remaining in the underground things coming up in the underground in this decade really doesn't last why do you think that is well because you need money to learn the skill to do something without money is very hard so most people cash out i never cashed out i was broke when i finished it you know i was more burnt out than cashing out um but that experience really was everything booking artist relations running a show you know it's just like that's a lot usually you have a whole staff of people doing that for me it was only um two of us and then we had a host so it wasn't like it was this kind of committee or anything you know i created this event just so my own band could get played and then it just snowballed you know to all these other people needing support was putting on that festival, you know, one of the major sparks that really inspired your love of collaboration? Collaboration to me is just community. I love being a solo artist and I love to really um, dwell in that. Of course, I've always been into multiple genres, you know, like right now I like to create, you know, like some small chamber orchestra, but they would play my music. I'm more into that now trying to create some sort of small orchestra as far as collaboration. But collaboration to me is community and it's very accidental. You know, you're just hanging out with your friend. Your friends are talented. It's all about seeing how talented your community is. Then collaboration is very easy. So it's not like I'm like out here seeking to collaborate with people. You know, it's just how it happens through community. Gather in a circle. My purpose, my collective work. Yeah. Here we go. 
my responsibility to the earth, to the hurt. I rework self determination. Shoot out my, we will outlast. Rise up from the past. Our future sway with that ass. Guess we Osiris and Cali now. We rise up, who gon' hold us down? Black fist in Golden Crown, Asian sound. They can't hold us down. Shake, shake, shake. So tell me about the writing process and the intentions that you set behind this new body of work. I was working on two albums at once. The album I was working on is called Jazz Codes that would be out next year. And this one, you know, sometimes you get a lot of different beats that may not fit the album that you're working on, but you still love them. So it was kind of like this thing I did on the side for fun while I was like working on this pretty intense record that involved a lot of different people and you know situations so uh that album of course took a very long time to finish so this was something that i can just do and just have something fun to record in the studio while waiting and also it was very healing to have something that i can just do for fun so it wasn't really a writing process for this album to be honest it was just kind of taking it track by track and then it was like oh wow this has come together to be something, you know, and just getting excited about something being almost finished, you know? So then it's about rounding the album out with the first song and the last two, just to put a little bit of, you know, where I'm usually coming from because this album is, is totally different. So I put those three tracks there to keep the same feeling just in case people wonder what's up. I was going to say those last two songs, they are more reminiscent of, some of your earlier work and especially uh, Fetish Bones. But yes, this new album, it's, I feel like sedate is the wrong word, but there's definitely a new groove there. You know, me and Olaf have done a bunch of stuff last year that was hinting at this, but it was definitely a little bit more avant-garde than this is. And the next one is even more accessible. So if you can even believe that. And then after the next one, I'm back to more avant-garde work. So this is kind of like this nice ride to experience me with this album and the next album. So yeah, I just wanted to make something really accessible. I constantly care about the message that I'm trying to get across. I'm always trying to present new type of vantage points for people to enter my work. What was it like putting yourself in, in that headspace of creating something more accessible? I know for a lot of artists, they might consider that dicey territory in terms of perhaps compromising their vision, but this record, it doesn't feel like you did that at all. No, and you'll definitely see with the next record. It, it was grooves that I liked, you know? I mean, it all started with my love for jazz. You know, I wrote a poetry book that I'm looking for a publisher for right now called Jazz Codes, the same name of the album. All I really wanted was just a couple of jazz loops to add to what I'm already doing. And that just turned into two albums, <laughs> to be honest. So it was really never a plan. I was just trying to read some poetry that I'm honoring certain jazz legends. So that's really where I wanted to do, you know, how music is, you know, it turns into more than you expect. It lights you up in different ways. Yeah, it wasn't scary. It's my words. It's only scary if it's someone else's words. You know, if someone's like, nah, say this. And I'm like, yikes. <laughs> what you know so as long as it's my words it's fine so i'm hinting at singing a bit so the next record i'm singing a lot more i got a new um this kind of hardware synthesizer that just manipulates voice so i was using that a lot just having fun yes yeah, so i just wanted to add a little bit of that kind of element I've always wondered like what your vocal inspirations, not necessarily in, in lyrical content, but like the sonic quality of their voice. Musicians or singers that you really admire the sonic quality of their voice because you've got such a distinctive one yourself. You know, my favorite singers are like Aretha Franklin and Pyla Bell. So I can never sing like them. So that's why I never tried to sing before because I love so, so much soul, Luther Vandross and things like that. I felt like, why not? You know, and every time I go to a concert to hear someone sing, last night I saw Moses and I'm like, oh, I should just be singing more. I don't even know what I'm worried about. I definitely want to sing, scream, poetry. I just want to use my vocals as a, you know, an instrument. That's what it is. I want to be able to not limit myself ever. You've spoken before quite a bit about the importance of 
younger musicians, new musicians, learning from the past and, and looking deeply at the intentions of great artists, you know, behind their superficial presentations. So I was wondering if you could talk a bit more about some of the elders who have been formative to your own artistic development and whether or not you feel like you take different lessons from these inspirations than other people do. I love people's stories of people's lives. That's always been inspiration all the time for me. I listen to music, but not so much. You know, I'm kind of like listen to the same song over and over again and then get a new song. I'm kind of like that kind of listen, music listener. <laughs> but working with the Art Ensemble of Chicago, touring with them, especially a show we did in Australia, um, working with Nicole Mitchell. These people I don't see as elders. I see as more of my colleagues, you know. Yeah, those two were very inspirational to me. Roscoe Mitchell. What are some of the songs you're listening over and over to? That's too embarrassing. <laughs> it's so embarrassing to say. But um, I do like this song on Donda called Remote Control. It's so like light and breezy. I thought it was a very good performance from Young Thug. I wanted to talk a little bit about your views on time traveling. I wondered if you thought sampling itself was a form of time travel. Oh, I've said this many times, of course. You know, sampling is very powerful. I mean, that's all we're doing is sampling in real time. So... Why wouldn't we reach further from the past? We're just reinventing or remixing what has been done. It's good to reach far back, you know. I don't really like to be, you know, that word influence is really interesting. I'm not listening to other people's music to come up with ideas for myself. I'm more um, just, you know, respective of their life and trying to do whatever I can to either break the cycle or expand the work that they've done. Break the cycle, meaning like what happened to Nina Simone, what happened to Billie Holiday, what happened to any woman in blues, and how come we know so few? That's what I'm trying to break. But it's hard because popular music always re remains supreme because it makes the most money. How would you describe your relationship to popular music as an artist and a listener? People are very surprised at the stuff that I don't even know or listen to. I like more underground music, I guess stuff that's not so mainstream you know i love erica badu to me like that's mainstream i guess but very soul and very rooted in culture you know i mean i try to listen to like skim through all the new music but no i love i like everyone you know and i encourage everyone you know i respect everyone as a musician and i love people that are just putting emotion on tracks i love people to be as genuine as themselves as they can be within the industry so i always admire that that's the dead clock. And it's called the people's time. No more master's clock. We travel space ways. What the fuck you say? Yeah. What the fuck you say? We kept the ghosts in. We didn't let them out. The haunting's real. They try to sweep me out. They jump crow the air. I couldn't scream or shout. All I could do was stare. Make my great escape. Said I was never. Something that I've noticed about the way that you speak in interviews, when you talk about your work in the community, it reminds me of the very beginnings of hip hop in the Bronx, when it was very community based, and people were sharing their ideas, there was a lot of teaching. So it's very interesting to see that same spirit, but in the context of Afrofuturism. Oh, yeah. I mean, early hip hop inspired me so much because I also grew up listening to punk rock. In, you know, an all black community. So when I can see that hip hoppers were also hanging out with the punks and just trying to create a broader sense of community, that was like the open door for me to do my thing, you know? That was like, this history does exist. It's not weird that you like punk rock. There's a meaning to this. I mean, there's a history to this. So that was very affirming. Yeah, I know you're a student of history. I was also wondering if your journeys in that regard, if you came across any new histories, any histories that are new to you, rather, that really informed your new album? Well, not really. Like I said, I was coming from jazz histories because I'm making two albums at once. So in my mind, in my heart, 
is the history of jazz and all the people that make it. Also blues. When I say jazz, I also talk about the blues in the same. I don't separate that. So a lot of blues musicians, you know, that's going to be the after I release all these albums I made, I'm going to really get into some blues, you know? So that's the journey right there. And I'm so ready. But because I make so many albums and I like to do this uh, two albums at once thing, it's really messing me up because I got to wait for it to come out. But I'm steady doing other stuff. What really invigorates you about making two albums at once? Something on the side to have fun. So, you know, it's just like when you have homework and you got math homework and it's a bit hard, but then you got some cool art project that you get to do. It's kind of like going back between both of those, you know, like the cool art project and then the hard math homework. That's kind of how it feels for me. Unless it's easy. I like things to be easy. I like to be in full creative mode. I don't really like any type of hardships or waiting or anything like that. I guess I'm a kind of a brat in that way, but I just like creating. You know, I don't even like send, sending the files. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just like, what? Send files? I'll write, I want to make another album. What is file sending? You know, so now I know I got to get my own engineer one day. I really don't like the mundane, but I'm getting better at that because now I'm a professor. So now it's like turning this mundane into creativity. And I think I've been pretty successful so far. Like one kid said after a class, this is, that was really fun, you know? So that like made me feel really good because I'm someone that don't even like compliments. So when I heard that, I was like, yes. And then another kid emailed me and said, our conversation was super inspiring, you know? So that's kind of how I want to do it. Like, yeah, we're not creating an album together, but we are, we are creating ideas. And I love that. Yeah, talk to me a little bit more about the particulars of the curriculum you've set up. As you mentioned, this fall, or perhaps even even right now, you're you're an assistant professor at the University of Southern California's Thornton School of Music. Yes, and I'm teaching composition too. The two means sophomore. It's actually a class I'm taking over from another great artist named Ted Hearns. And then hopefully after this year, I will be creating my own class which I'm going to come out with a bang for that. But for right now, just teaching composition. I mean, I told the students, you know, the first day, like my expertise is feeling sensitivities because I'm a poet, you know? So that's like my main thing is to feel what other people are going through the world, not just like my neighborhood, you know? So um, that's why I always say like people that ask about Philadelphia, like, no, I'm a world musician. You know, I'm about to change my name to world musician, you know, so people can stop boxing me in these kind of places because these are world problems. These are not isolated problems that people are going through. And that's why I'm able to perform in so many places because I realized this. Do you ever feel overwhelmed by this sense of feeling? No, because that's my job. Sometimes, you know, um, I wish I would write more. Because every time I write, it's, it's a great benefit to me. The more I write, the more successful I am, you know, which is kind of crazy, but successful in my own heart and my work, you know, I got to just write more. You're already pretty prolific as, as an artist. Yeah, but I'm not writing enough. That's why I'm trying to get a book deal. It's been so hard. Yeah, hopefully someone out there listening want to offer me a book deal, you know. Um, and like I said, my the poetry, the new poetry I wrote is absolutely amazing you hear two poems on the album i'm just really i love poetry you know i every day i'm learning more and that's the most important aspect of my work at first i thought it was all the cool synthesizers and stuff i got but actually it's the poetry are there any newer poets that you're reading that have really struck you as essential new voices i like the uh imani robertson who i had on brass the album i did with billy woods this hip-hop album i had and I like Joy Kimmett, who I've worked with a lot in the past. I love Sonia Sanchez and Amiri Baraka and Toni Morrison and Ntozake Shange. Lastly, do you consider your music to be a counterweight to anything? Like, do you feel like your creative output, your music, is balancing out something else that's out there in the world, whether it's another creative work or another political force? Not really. Like I said, I tend to be in my own world as much as possible. So I'll, I'm just trying to do things from my heart, you know. 
I don't really know what else other people are doing. One thing that is inspiring is just like being a conductor. I told my students that musicians are conductors of human emotion. So it's my job to try to pull things out of people. But definitely standing on the shoulders of everyone before me. Okay, I think that'll do it. More Mother, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you so much. Peace to the world. Love you all. And I appreciate your time. Fucking waking up inside, tight gun to face, no budget, can't hide. Can't trust me if we ain't eye to eye, no eye. Facts, skin in my soul, be black. Run last to get out that trash. Run around, look at that, look at that. Tight be willing, you can't tell where we at. You don't know where we get, relax. Night terrors creep from the cracks. Learning to the path, I know. Thus to the bone, no rose. Who crossing, peeking inside, too close. Like my neighbor watching, few kind of miss by the mirror. Talking to the convo, I got lost in shit. That was More Mother in conversation with The Fader's Jordan Darvill. More Mother's new album, Black Encyclopedia of the Air, is out this Friday, September 17, via Anti. Our engineer is Tony Giambroni, and our associate producer is Salvatore Mackey. We'd like to thank Lauten Audio for providing our microphones. You can find them online at lautenaudio.com. And we'd like to thank James Ivey, for providing our intro music. Remember to follow The Fader interview wherever you listen to podcasts and keep an eye on thefader.com for essential music news, interviews, and essays. We'll be back next week with another episode of The Fader interview. Goodbye until then. You know that one song you can't get enough of? Chances are it was made with a sample from Splice. Explore top packs made by your favorite producers sketch out song ideas in seconds with create mode, and dive into a sample catalog that's so deep, it's dangerous. Find out why Splice is the industry's not-so-secret secret. Visit splice.com and try for free today.